the Mighty Dash there on the ground in Gander, Newfoundland. We are about to embark on the next leg of our round the world journey and it will be the first one out over open ocean. Let me just show you the route we're going to take really quickly to get us from here to Nook in Greenland where the weather is bad and um, we may have to fly either a funky straight in localizer DME approach or an even funkier circling approach onto a pretty short airstrip. So let me uh, show you here is our flight plan. And the first thing you'll notice is there are no waypoints to speak of. And that is because we are going out across open ocean. About 900 miles of open ocean. We, of course, have the Mighty Dash's FMS, which has GPS data and inertial data to work with, but we are also going to try to navigate this the way Lindbergh might have, which is by dead reckoning, by flying a fix and correcting for the wind drift. The problem is that um, we do not have any intermediate fixes to correct ourselves along the way. We're going to try to make up for that a little bit by flying outbound on Gander's VOR first and then on Gander's NDB second, which will give us a little more range, and then by homing to or tracking to Cook Island right here and making the way up the fjord to Nook. But um, it's going to be a little bit funky. Um, and uh, I'm not sure if there's really any other way around it. So um, we'll keep an eye on our winds aloft and um, we will... Um, I think what we'll do is we will do it without FMS data to begin with and see how we get on. I've loaded plenty of fuel on board and uh, I think we've got several other NDBs here so that we can more or less check our northerly progress, but of course we don't really um, have much of an ability to draw fixes from them. Um, we can sort of make it up as we go along by getting a bearing to here and a bearing to here, <coughs> excuse me, and seeing how we're doing, but um, it's not going to be perfect. So. Anyway, let's uh, let's get going. Check our weather really quickly. It is lousy at Nook, but fortunately a high ceiling. <coughs> Pardon me, I'm still quite uh, quite a bit under the weather here. And where we are, 2944, 270. So, set 2944.
Okay, that's set. Our V-speeds are already set. We've got a basically just about a full load of fuel on board, and that is in case we get lost. We are going to... Let's see where we are. We are right here. We are going to taxi out to this abandoned runway here. Hang a left and another left and take off on runway 21. So, straight ahead, left, and another left. Meantime, let's get started up. We don't need a push. Turn off our bleeds. Turn on the red light. Good looking start. Start one. And we'll bring Number two to max. Make sure our parking brake is set. Turn our steering on. I'm going to turn our bleeds to max for the moment. heats. Kill the bus tie. Bring up number one. do is we want to fly the uh, 027 radial outbound. So again, we're not really doing this with the FMS. So we'll set zero two seven Okay, so that is set. ourselves in heading select mode at the moment. So what we'll do is we'll take off on runway 210, on, pardon me, runway 21, and uh, then uh, make 
a left turn to 027. All right, temps and pressures are okay. Bleeds are on and max at the moment, but there'll be min. Seat our passengers. Everything else is cool. So let's get going. Now, I've got that magenta line as a cheat. What I can do as we turn on our pumps and aux is an auto feather, is I can turn it off. And I will turn it off just in one second. I think there's a way I can do that. here. That doesn't do it. I know what I'll do. I'll insert a new approach. And that'll have a discontinuity in it. Before we go any further, let's do that. So what we'll do, delete this, and delete KU, and go to menu, arrive, one, two, three, No, we'll do runway 5, because we're going to have to circle anyway. And watch this. No, still there. 
All right, so what we'll do is we'll delete this whole thing. Work without a net here. All right, let's find out where we are as well. Okay, so we'll make a left and another left. Okay, we can bring our bleeds to men. Anti-collision lights can go to white. Taxi lights can come off. Runway lights can come on. Heats are all on. Cautions are clear. Pumps are set. Take off with flaps 10. Trims are good. We're cleared all the way up to our cruising altitude. Set an acceleration altitude here. There we go. And here we go. Here goes nothing. A lot of fuel. That's why we're slow accelerating. But still. This is, after all, the mighty dash. All right. Gear up. Trim the rudder a little bit. Flaps coming up. coming back. Okay. Pitch for the climb. Pop in the autopilot. And turn to join the 027 outbound.
a second, I'll take care of that ice. It's not going to catch it as accurately as we'd like, but there you have it. Too bad. Alright, so we've got about a hundred miles worth of this, at least to guide us. Zero, yes it is. Two eight zero on ADF one. What I am doing is using this for winds aloft. second this needle will point closer and closer to right about our tail. And you see our heading is 020 but our track is 027 so it's a 7 degree drift. I don't have a table with me, a drift table, so this could present difficulties. But let's see. Our next available beacon should be... and Anthony. And that's 113.7. Let's turn off my DME hold function here. And let's see, we want to be let's get a distance. 
clear out this flight plan. I didn't want to do that. Luckily... Distance to delete Saint Anthony. So seventy miles at about about two ninety. Set standard altimeter. So what we're going to do is we are going to fly until we can receive St. Anthony. We're going to look over at that needle and check when it points directly off our left wing, see how far away we are, and that will help us correct our track sort of ghetto form of dead reckoning. So there it is. It's pointing at St. Anthony right now. And again, we're going to wait till it gets to right about there and see what our distance is. And we will steer until we establish about 70 miles. And then what we'll do is we'll fly outbound, let's see, fly outbound on the 090. farthest way we can get a fix here. Hundred twenty three miles give or take. And that would be on the let's see. Zero six zero, give or take. It's so pointing at about two four zero. Good, it's a nice long distance VOR.
sort of making this up as we go along. Because at a certain point, we are going to be on our own. Okay, coming up on our top of climb. Got loads of fuel. Props can come back. Not much of a chatty Kathy today. It's mainly just because I'm still a little bit under the weather, so apologies. Um, I would like to say thank you to everybody, though, for subscribing. It's now 350 of you and growing, and uh, I appreciate it. Appreciate all the kind words also, and the advice, and the suggestions for um, flying. Um, I'm flying this way because, uh, mainly because of a suggestion from a viewer asking me to fly this by radio beacons and um, dead reckoning, so we're doing what we can. I have to admit it is a little bit daunting. because at a certain point I'm going to be switching over into um, into heading mode here at least for a good chunk of this until we get within range of um, the KU beacon the Cook's Island beacon and we can home to that from that everything looks good we are creeping ever closer to St. Anthony's the fix coming out of it
Now, if we're still tracking outbound on this VOR and it still is good, then um, we will not really need to cross-check with this very much because we're on the right track, as it were. But we will keep it tuned in because our next check will almost certainly be out of reach and out of range of everything else. And that'll be when we want to be at about 240 and 123 miles. So we'll want the needle to be right about there. Although we may lose the station by then. We'll see. Very lonely flying up here. But with any luck, we'll have this NDB for company at least for a little while. And if we need to, we can always um, see where our next radio beacon is going to be. See, obviously, we don't have anything in the water, although there used to be ships that had radio beacons on them. Let's see, our next radio beacon would be Simutac. Keeping an eye on the wind and uh, what kind of drift we're going to have. And the drift is about one tenth of our forward component. So, roughly speaking, for every uh, 10 miles we travel forward, we drift one mile from right to left. means we drift, let's see, oh boy, yeah. We could be conceivably, if the wind is fairly constant like this, and so far it has been, we could be 90 miles off by the end of our journey. But we're going to aim, so to speak, to be a little bit better than that. And since I don't have a drift table, I'm going to actually calculate the drift by looking at, at the way we are set up. So we've got a six degree correction, 
which is pretty much taking care of business. So we'll rely on that and interpolate a little bit in our heads uh, from that, depending on the changing wind. All right, now our angle to St. Anthony's VOR is steepening. And our distance is decreasing, as it should. And in a little while, we're going to lose the Gander VOR and probably be left with the Gander NDB. And at a certain point, we'll be left with flying a heading. And at the moment, if we continue to fly a heading, we will stick with the heading we're on, because that seems to be correcting nicely for the wind. And we will change the heading based on whether that wind increases or decreases. And the other thing we'll do is we will fly so that this needle ends up at, uh, when this needle ends up at about 240, we need to be about 123 miles away from its slant range. And not only is it cold up here and cold where we're going, but it's finally starting to get cold in New York. New Year's Day, and finally, it's in the 30s. As soon as we uh, we lose this VOR, just cross check our position here. Uh, I'm gonna cut the video and um, pick it up again when we get closer to landfall, just because there won't be a whole lot to see. So just give it a m moment or two more here. Again, we're looking to be a beam the station at 70 miles on the DME. Should put us on course. Or whatever it shows if we're still receiving this VOR, which is getting somewhat doubtful. Doing too bad though, distance wise, this is starting to creep closer to 70. And again, that's sort of just eyeballed from here to here.
too bad, though. We're about to lose the VOR. Maybe another five miles at the outside. So we'll see. We're high altitude. And no doubt when you put a VOR at a place like Gander, where there's nothing but ocean in front of you, chances are you put a high-powered, high-altitude one because you know that's what it's going to be used for. Okay, this is creeping closer to the 70-ish we were looking for. getting a lot of mileage out of that VOR. Our wind has died down just a little bit. And our drift angle is somewhere halfway between six, uh, between five and six degrees. Still receiving our NDB. Pretty good. And again, no magenta line. And this is pointing right to there. OK, 
Okay, so we're at beam the station. So 74 was the distance. And I think what I'll do is uh, cut the video right here and we'll pick it up a bit closer to Greenland. And here we are again with the moon rising and the sun setting. There's the sun sinking into the west. And we are still over water, but um, we are about, oh, about 150 miles away from our destination. I uh, did a little bit of checking in the moment ago while we were away, um, plugged in a route, and determined that after about 800 miles of dead reckoning, we were off by about 17, 18 miles to the left of track, so that wasn't too bad, all things considered. Uh, it wasn't a ton of wind, and it wasn't shifting wind, so it was fairly predictable, but right now the wind is behind us. Uh, we're coming in to Nook. We're going to land, I believe, on uh, runway 5. Let's see. Yes, at 060, 17 knots, 2915. Just set that in our standby. And we'll have to set a descent in a minute. It is a very short runway, 4,000 feet long. Uh, this is for the opposite approach. That's no good. A lot of people, including many scientists, seem... Yeah, okay. Thanks, t-shirt guy. It's the first... No, I don't want you either. All right. Give me one second here. While I get our approach plate. All right, this is the circling approach, but the straight in approach is more or less the same. Um, Nippet to Gonan to Altux is our final approach fix and then add MIP at which point we should be visual with the field it's a circling arrival no matter which way we go in and uh, let's see missed approach point is 680 feet that. Excuse my uh, coughing. I'm just going to turn off the mic for a second. Sorry about that. Still battling um, the uh, flu. And it's the honest to God flu. When people say, oh yeah, I had a stomach flu. That's not the flu. Or at a 24-hour flu. There is no such thing. When you get infected with the influenza virus, which is the flu, you're generally sick for anywhere from five to seven days, heavily sick, and then um, you usually feel rotten for another week or so after that. And that's pretty much where I am right now. 
at the uh, feeling rotten part. It's a 4,000 foot strip. Um, just to make it challenging, we're still going to fly it. Flaps 15, because I like that profile better. Uh, maybe a stupid move, I'm not sure. But let's just program in a descent here. So, 5,500. is it and that's to nip it uh, VNAV nip it all right so top of descent in 10 minutes and we're getting turbulized here it looks like Okay, everybody's still seated. That's good. We may need the ice protection in a minute. A little bit of an obstacle illusion going on in that uh, the upper layer of clouds is very close to us, and the bottom layer looks like it is moving past us. Looks like the top layer is standing still, but it's not. There's our TOD. I'm not sure why our display is so janky here, but um, so be it. I'm kind of pleased with my navigation over the water. It wasn't perfect, but, um, you know, given the winds, uh, if we had done nothing, we would have been off by more than 100 miles, so the fact that we were off by about uh, 17 was pretty good. A little bit jounced around here, though. As we wait for TOD. Dusk here arriving. The airport sits about 280 some odd feet up on a hillside. Let's set our landing elevation. That's about right. And it is a rather intimidating arrival. There are approach lights on the far end. So if we do do a missed approach, we have to climb out sort of sharpish because they, uh, they're they lying there and wait to scrape off a piece of our airplane. And the approach is a little bit of a circling approach. The, um, this approach is going to leave us off visual with the runway which should be a little bit very slightly off to our right just pick up the pace a little bit here now that we're past that uh, convective crap why this is displaying a test pattern. It is in test, it says. However, if we look at our radar, we see that it is not in test. I'll flip it into test. Now I'll flip it out of test. See if that fixes it. Okay, now. Good. Now it's on. Okay, well, go figure. A few more quirks. coming up in seven minutes. I feel like mission control in Houston. T minus seven minutes and counting. The 
auto sequencing flight computer is on. Okay. This is uh, Aerosoft. Well, it's purchased at Aerosoft, but it's scenery from an outfit called FSDG Nook, and it is reputed to be really good. Uh, okay. That's our prop governor, and that's because of our throttle. Thank you, SciTech. And yes, we've lost the number two, PEC. And often the way we can fix that is by cycling the props. First, let's make sure we're straight and level we are. Okay, let's see if we can make it work now. No. All right, the other way you fix it is by shutting down the engine. for a second. Shut it off. Now that shouldn't be whistling. It's in disk, but all right. Select number two. Start number two. Is that our autopilot popping out? Yep. Pop it back in. All right, we got a clean start. Yes, we do. Wait a second. to about 200. Or actually it only goes up to about 130 when you're in the air. I forgot about that. Okay. online. Let's see if our prop governor governs, and it does. All right, so we'll bring them both to max. Keep an eye on our speed there. Okay. Uh, we'll bring back our props. Max climb and max cruise, and we're back in business. Not without our drama, though. And that is because my throttle quadrant burps, and this thing spazzes out, and then it blows up the uh, prop governor. Okay, so having dispatched that, we're for three minutes from TOD. Totally, totally unnecessary. In 
the real plane, as I understand it, you would simply land on, on one engine. Got our first constraint programmed in. And there we go. Pop us into VNAV mode. Gene here. As the sun goes down, this should be interesting. No weather to speak of. And down we go. Slowly rolling back the power a bit so we don't overspeed. But so we still go as fast as possible. Retrim the rudder. That's a good. confess I am a stranger to this airport so this could be fun the uh, skies are clear below about 210 so <coughs> excuse me um, if we have to circle I suppose we can circle the land Mist approach is just a turn and a climb to 5500 and then direct back to Nippet and hold there. This should be interesting. There are ice flows down there. Wow. I don't know why I'm surprised. This is uh, Greenland in the wintertime. So we're 50 from Nippet, and have to come down 15. We're right bang on. Other than that, it's been a fairly uneventful flight. 
probably should be landing flaps 35, but... Matter of fact, let's not be stupid. Let's land flaps 35. It requires slightly different technique, but that's quite okay. I think we can manage it. Um, requires a bit more power, and um, it actually requires that you roll off the power a little bit as you come over the threshold, which is totally different from any other uh, configuration in the dash, because normally you do not do that, period. You land with... Uh, you land with uh, the gas on. Let's just check our winds here at... Uh, okay. Zero, six, zero at 17, so we're doing the right thing. And snow. Set our altimeter to three zero one five. I'm going to do it just a little bit slowly so we don't lose our VNAV path. If you don't want to disconnect you, it's not a big thing, but it assumes that you're. Vertical deviation has exceeded a certain amount, and then it disconnects the uh, VNAV, puts you in a pitch hold mode. Okay, less than 10,000 to go. just spin this down to exactly what I want and then deal with the consequences. It's not a big deal. All you do is reconnect the VNAV path. And what we will do is we will spin our altitude down. why it is foggy in the cabin. In the cockpit. I believe that is an artifact of Active Sky. Start slowing to uh, 250. So there's a nip it and a right hand turn and then a left and then a quick little circle to the runway. Okay, there's 250. Stay right there. See, my power lever gave another jump, and that's not right. OK, 
Okay, so 15, we need to come down. 45, and we can. on max. I just want to see if that clears up anything. Seems like we are filled in the cockpit here with fog. Okay, so six and a half from Nippet. And we need to come down 2,000 feet. We can do that. Slow to two, 200 for Nippet. and configured. Again, I've never flown in here, so this should be interesting. Okay, we'll drop in our first five degrees of flaps. flows. Yikes. Forbidding little place. Should be able to see a city somewhere. Nothing yet. activated. And here comes the snow. Oh, those are mountains around us, baby. Oh. Okay, I'll 
I'll bring in the gear. Bring out the gear at Eltux. And we've got four miles and have to come down 1,600 feet. So it's a little steeper than normal. Still see nothing. Speed. Might as well get fully configured here. Still don't see Diddly. A five mile final. flows. Ah. And we're low. See runway. See pappies. Just a little slow. There we are. Okay. Start to come down a bit. We're a little high now. Props to Max here, so we steepen out our arrival. There we go. Got a crosswind from the right. A little bit low. Bad. That's a 
about right. Quite a crosswind, though. Mongo don't like. Way. looking little airport. Wow. It's probably the only welcoming place within 500 miles. Well, as we make our way, uh, gate here. Um, our next stop is Keflavik, Iceland. And uh, thanks once again to everybody who subscribed, all 350 of you. Wasn't the prettiest arrival, but uh, we did what we could. that I wanted to put in our gust lock. Um, so until next time, happy flying to all you and keep the suggestions coming for uh, European destinations because uh, I know uh, I'm going to need a bunch of them. And uh, see you next time.